Calcium ions, or Ca2 plus ions, are one of the most important signaling molecules in cells. Almost all bodily biological processes, including heart and muscle contractions, neurotransmission of information, learning and memory, embryo formation and development, cell proliferation, etc., are regulated by calcium ions. These calcium ions enter the cytoplasm and organelles through calcium channels. There are mainly six types of calcium channels, of which only two are prominent in the heart. In cardiac tissues, the two types of calcium channels are the L-type and the T-type. All cardiac cells include L-type channels, while Purkinje, pacemaker, and atrial cells have T-type channels. Both of these channels play a role in pacemaker activity and atrioventricular conduction. Both of these channels are voltage-gated means they permit or block the passage through a cell membrane in response to an electrical stimulus. L-type, which presents in all cardiac cells is involved in myocardial contraction, on the other hand, T-type helps in impulse generation through the SA node or pacemaker of the heart and conduction through the conduction pathway of the heart. So, the pacemaker cells go under depolarization mainly due to L-type or long-acting voltage-gated channels in the heart, and the cardiac cells contract. Calcium channel blockers are drugs that are used to reduce blood pressure. They work by blocking calcium from entering the cells of the heart and arteries. The heart and arteries contract harder when calcium is present. Calcium channel blockers prevent calcium from entering cells, allowing blood vessels to relax and widen. Some calcium channel blockers can also lower blood pressure by slowing heart rate. Additionally, the drugs may be administered to treat an irregular heartbeat and help relieve angina or chest pain. The calcium channel blockers are also called calcium channel antagonists. So all the clinically used calcium channel blockers are of L-type. There are both short-acting and long-acting calcium channel blockers. The effects of short-acting drugs wear off after a few hours, but they work quickly. Long-acting drugs release gradually to have a longer-lasting effect. Which one is best for you depends on your health and the condition being treated. Calcium channel antagonists bind to the L-type long-acting voltage-gated calcium channels found in the heart, vascular smooth muscle, and pancreas to prevent calcium from moving inward. Based on their main physiological actions, calcium channel antagonists are divided into two main types, dihydropyridines and non-dihydropyridines. The non-dihydropyridines slow cardiac conduction and contractility by acting as inhibitors on the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes. This makes it possible to cure hypertension, reduce oxygen demand, and aid in tachydysrhythmia rate control. Whereas, the dihydropyridines, in therapeutic dosing, have a little direct effect on the myocardium and instead, are more often peripheral vasodilators, which is why they are useful for hypertension, post-intracranial hemorrhages associated vasospasm, and migraines. Calcium channel antagonist administration can be done via the intravenous or oral routes. Examples of calcium channel blockers include amlodipine, which is most commonly used in clinical practice and given orally in dose of 5 or 10 mg once or twice a day. Next, diltiazem, felodipine, isratipine, nicardipine, nifedipine, nisoldipine, and verapamil are also one of the most used calcium channel blockers today. Here are a few things you need to know before starting calcium channel blockers. Potential side effects from taking a calcium channel blocker include dizziness or lightheadedness, low blood pressure, and heart rhythm problems. They are also contraindicated in patients with cardiogenic shock, severe aortic stenosis, unstable angina, severe hypotension, heart failure, and hepatic impairment. So, I have a question for you, why calcium channel blockers are contraindicated in heart failure? Although, it has been suggested that calcium channel blocking agents may be utilized as vasodilators in patients with congestive heart failure, these agents also have the potential to cause a deterioration in cardiac function because of their negative enotropic actions, hence they should be avoided and you can always use an alternative in place. In the next video we will discuss the most important of all antihypertensive used in clinical practice, that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors in detail. To understand it properly, we recommend you watch the renin angiotensin mechanism for once. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.